Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be bringing you a video on what I think are the top five loadouts in Warzone 2 Season 2 Reloaded. So the first one I think is something that's underrated um, is the AK-47. So the AK-47 still hits like a truck. It's very similar to the RPK was back when that was the meta. Uh, it has a little bit more recoil. But I think if you're a solo or a duo player, this is definitely a viable weapon. The only downside is it has a little bit of side-to-side -side recoil, um, which can be hard to control, but you could make up for that with certain attachments if that's uh, what you need help with. But definitely a solid gun, especially with TTK. Um, I think it outclasses the Hemlock in TTK, especially in that short to medium range. Uh, and here's what I have it the attachments for. Um, tuned them all for basically recoil control, damage range, bolt velocity when you can. Um, the sight is a preference. You could put on a different sight, but I'll just show you the guns really not that bad for recoil As you can see about to 50 meters or so 40 meters It's still a viable weapon and then for this submachine gun the Vell, it recently got buffed especially in the medium range uh, I think it was the short to medium range that got buffed. They extended the damage range out a little bit um, So this is more of a hip fire build uh, if you think back to Warzone 1, there were several weapons that had just insane hip fire. The Vell is one of them that has can get really good hip fire. So I'll just show you here before we walk through the attachments. But look at how tight the crosshairs are here. The recoil control with the hip fire, not bad. But this thing is actually fairly consistent up to about 20 meters, 15 meters hip firing. Um, and the nice thing about it is it can get a six round mag. So if you're someone who wants to just have some fun, hit fire, you know, push a building and hit fire some kids, this is definitely a solid build for you. Um, so like I said, you could do a 50, 60 round mag. I do the 50 just to be a little quicker, uh, but you could do the 60. I actually put the recoil control stock on it to help with that hit fire recoil. Um, but I put aim walking steadiness because you're hip firing, you don't need any ADS speed really. Um, and then I have the suppressor for recoil, bullet velocity. You're not aiming, so uh, again, you don't need ADS speed, aiming idle stability. Uh, and then hip recoil control, hip fire accuracy for the, with the pineapple. Um, so definitely a solid option. Could be fun. Um, does it compete with the top two SMGs? No. Is it really good? It's fine, but it's fun. You know, uh, it's better than some of the other SMGs that are in this game. All right, moving on to number four. This gun actually got nerfed in season two reloaded. It received a damage range nerf, um, but it's still a viable option. I just think it's too slow for people, a lot of people to use, especially higher skilled players. Um, but it, I, as far as LMGs goes, this is the best one in the game currently. Uh, it, it has minimal recoil. It still has really good damage. It has a hundred rounds. So you can just spray people down with it. Um, it isn't hard to use. It's just really freaking slow. And I think that's what holds people back from it. And that's why you don't see it a ton. But uh, I'll just show you. It has a little bit of side to side recoil, but that's the sack and it's always been like that. Um, so again here, we're tuning everything for damage range, bullet velocity, recoil control. Um, most of my long range weapon loadouts they're going to be tuned for those things because they're your primary weapon. You're going to be using them at like 70 meters a lot of times. So those are the things that are important. Um, pretty standard attachments on this one. If you've seen a meta loadout for the sacking before, this is pretty much what everyone is using. This is a submachine gun that I think is kind of slept on um, and is also fun. It doesn't have a great TTK like the Lockman and the Vaznev. Um, and I don't even think the TTK is as high as the MP7 or the Vell. But this thing is so freaking fast. Um, just by, like, even if you just look, I'm not even sprinting here. And I'm moving so quick. And then the sprint speed on it is very fast, too. So uh, I like to pair it with the Sacken just because of the speed. I can use this to move around the map quicker. And then on top of that, look at your ADS walking speed. So this is really important because if you have really quick strafe speed, this could actually cause people to miss shots if they're on controller because it could get out of their aim assist area. Um, and so this thing, it doesn't have an amazing TTK. It's got a little bit of recoil. You're not going to be using this to hit the, you know, 
target 30 meters, 40 meters away. But, you know, up to about 20, this thing is pretty solid. And as you can see, not great damage range. Recoils, a little, eh, it's got a bit. But, you know, if you're in a building or something, like, this thing is fast. Even when you're shooting, some of the guns will slow down when you shoot, when you're walking. This one just keeps going, right? So, something to try um, if you're getting bored of the Lockman or, you know, your main SMG. Uh, definitely give this a go. So, the attachments on here I'll actually run through. We have the light rail, tuning for sprint to fire and sprint speed. The TV tech comb, aim walking speed, ADS speed, hollow extended stock, aim walking speed, ADS speed. And then this barrel is actually kind of unique because it gives you uh, damage range, bullet velocity, hit fire accuracy, and movement speed. Not a lot of weapons actually have a barrel like that. Um, but you tune it for aim walking speed and ADS speed. And this thing, as you can see, so fast. Um, so definitely a fun gun to use. I think it is very viable um, because of that strafe speed. I don't know that I would use this in quads or trios just because... Um, the TTK on it and recoil control are not great, but solos and duos, even though it has 50 round mag, definitely something that is viable. All right, moving on to three. I think uh, sniping in this game, no one shot snipers except that limited time mode with the St. Patrick's Day. Um, you know, there's goods and bads to not having one shot snipers, but I still think sniping, especially as a support player, um, if you're one of those, is still really viable. Um, and the MCPR, I think, is the best sniper in the game by far. It's got 10 rounds, basically hit scan, very little bullet drop, very easy to crack people's plates from, uh, you know, 150 meters. You, it, like I said, it's basically hit scan. So you just really tune this mostly for bullet velocity um, and then damage range, except I don't tune it for damage range on the barrel. I like a little bit more ADS speed, um, but I'll show, go through the tunings on this really quick. So... Damage range, bullet velocity on the high velocity rounds, the FTAC Reaper. I tune for ADS speed because it's a bolt action. You don't need to tune for recoil. Uh, and then bolt velocity. The Lion Stock. So this is where you could maybe change it up. If you want it to be a little snappier, you could get rid of this stock. And you could put one on like this where you get increased ADS speed, sprint speed. Um, you lose some recoil control. But I like having aiming stability just a little bit more so I can hit those follow-up shots really easy. Um, the OLEV laser, uh, aim walking steadiness is kind of nice on the sniper because if you are strafing a little bit, your scope's not moving around as much. Um, and then I'd actually, I just don't tune this one because I kind of just want it neutral. Um, I want a little bit ADS speed. I still want the aiming and idle stability. So I just keep it at neutral. And then the barrel, um, I keep it at neutral on the recoil and aim walking speed. I don't think, you know, I could tune it for this if I wanted to, cause that, you know, Recoil control is not that important, but it's not like I'm needing to strafe super fast with a sniper. And then I tune it for ADS speed just so it's a little bit snappier. And at this point, I mean, the damage range, the, the damage range bonus you're going to get from tuning it for damage range isn't going to be that much. Um, it's probably going to be mostly for your super far distances. And it's not like you're one-shotting people anyway. So. One thing I used to do is I used to put on the rechambering speed bolt. But I found that that causes me to miss some follow-up shots. Um, and because this is a two-shot kill, uh, you need to hit your follow-up shots. So I don't put this on. I just keep it at the normal rechambering speed. Um, but I think this is the best sniper in the game by far. And then as far as sniper support, there's a couple options you could do. My favorite's the Hemlock. The Camara is pretty good. 74U is pretty good. I like the Hemlock for support because it seems the most versatile. So for this, what I actually do is I tune it for mostly speed, but then I put the FTAC Ripper on so I can hit shots at a medium range distance. Um, I'm going to need to be able to fight people that are probably, you know, 20 to 30 meters away from me um, and be able to hit those shots. So I'll show you what it's like in a minute, but I'll run through the attachments first. So the FTAC Ripper, recoil, aiming idle, stability. If you want it to be a little quicker, you could go the inverse way. You could go ADS speed, aim walking speed. The Arcom stock is probably the most important attachment on this because... The benefits are sprint speed, aim walking speed, crouch speed, ADS speed, things you need to have a good sniper support weapon. You need this to be snappier than your typical AR. Um, so aim walking speed, ADS speed for the tunings. I use the Chrono Mini Pro on my close range weapons because it has a clearer sight picture than the AMOP before. Uh, the Hemlock's iron sights are kind of trash. 
So I'll definitely put a sight on this. Tune it for ADS speed. And then the FSS LEV laser sprint to fire ADS. And then as you can see here for an AR, fairly solid aim walking speed. You could increase this by uh, tuning the your underbarrel um, for more aim walking speed. But look at the sprint to fire on this AR. And then the ADS speed is really good. And then on top of that, you're able to hit shots at like 30 to 40 meters consistently. Um, so that's why I think it's the best sniper support weapon. Moving on to number two, this gun was just added in season two reloaded, the Tempest Torrent, it's a marksman rifle. Uh, to unlock it, you either need to extract it from DMZ or you need to get 25 double kills using marksman rifles in multiplayer and or Warzone. Um, but this gun is super, super good in the like short to medium range. Uh, you can actually get a three shot kill on people. It's got a good fire rate. And this marksman rifle is unique from the others in that you can get a 50 round drum. And that's important because marksman rifles, they use sniper rifle ammo. So you can only carry 40 shots in reserves. But when you add this 50 drum, round drum, you effectively have 90 shots for this gun. Um, and that just makes a huge difference. Uh, so you don't necessarily need to, you know, stockpile 40 to 80 rounds of sniper ammo in your backpack. You can just have a muni box and you're good. Um, but what I like to tune this for is uh, recoil control and bullet velocity and, and damage rage when I can. So 50 round drum is, an, is a must on this gun. It also reloads really quick with the 50 round drum. It's crazy. Um, but high velocity rounds definitely needed uh, just to get you... To be able to hit those shots consistently at uh, a distance um so again tuning re for recoil control and steadiness phase three grip recoil um you could put aiming idle stability but like as you can see here when i tune it it doesn't really make a difference so i just kind of keep it at neutral um the talon recoil control bullet velocity and then i like the 3.4x on it tuning for ads speed and a little bit of close um you could put the ammo v4 since you're, this gun is not great at a distance it takes several bullets to kill at like super far range even though it's a marksman rifle um it's also hard to hit those shots at a super far distance um so you could put the ammo up if that's your thing i just like having a little bit uh more zoom on something that's a semi-auto but one thing i found with this gun is that it kind of has a cap on the amount of recoil so if we look at this poor door that always gets absolutely blasted by bullets, you'll see that after like my third or fourth shot, the recoil doesn't increase anymore. And so if you're someone who is really good at recentering your shots, uh, definitely try this gun. So I moved my thumb a little bit down on there, but I'll show you on the little target dummies. So I'm not, I don't have my thumb on the controller right now at all. And you can see that this gun is like not moving. So if you can recenter while you're shooting, this gun is very good. And like I said, after about the third or fourth shot, the recoil, it just can't increase anymore. It's reached its peak. Um, and so you just have to recenter it. Uh, definitely a solid weapon. And I would highly, highly, highly recommend this. Um, if you uh like to play in that sh you know short medium or you know medium range play style all right and then moving on to the lockman this is probably the number one meta smg for most people but it's actually not my favorite um and what i do is i tune it a little different differently than other people you'll see a lot of different loadouts for this gun i'm sure they're all good this is just my preference um 50 round mag just because if you are playing trios or quads it's really nice to have that that much ammo in your magazine to get multiple knocks um or cleans uh, I put the Lockman uh, rear grip on it for recoil control, but I actually tune it for sprint to fire speed and ADS speed. And then I have the uh, mirror recoil factory stock, ADS, aim walking speed, typical VLK laser sprint to fire ADS. And then I actually put the agent grip on to help with hip fire accuracy, and then I can increase the aim walking speed and ADS speed with it. And as you can see here, you know, it doesn't move the quickest side to side, but great sprint to fire amazing ads super snappy you know fairly easy to hit shots at 15 to 20 meters with this gun um and then the 50 round mag is super nice all right moving on to number one what i think is the best loadout in the game currently 
is actually using the Vaznev for your submachine gun. So I find the Vaznev much more consistent than the Lockman. Um, I think the Lockman might have a little bit better of a TTK at certain ranges, especially at close, but I find the Vaznev just so much better at short medium, um, especially like 15 meters. Uh, so I tune this for sprint to fire and ADS speed when I can, um, and then aim walking speed. So I have this stock on it using eight, and tuning for ADS speed, aim walking speed, the FSS OLEV laser, ADS speed, sprint to fire, shark fin because it doesn't give any negatives and so and i can also tune it for ads and aim walking speed and then i have the ftac castle comp to help me with the horizontal recoil control this gun does have a lot of side to side kick um but putting this on it actually like makes this thing pretty much a laser out to a pretty good distance and i'll show you it here right so this gun is fairly accurate i find this way better than the lockman it actually has better aim locking speed than the lockman um compared to my previous build sprint uh or ads speed still pretty good and sprint to fire speed very good for a sub all right and then the number one gun everybody's using it you probably know it it's the hemlock uh it's definitely the best ar in the game super easy to use super accurate great ttk good damage range um there's a reason everybody use it, right? uses it, right? Uh, there's a couple different builds people will have with it. This is my favorite build. Um, it has good bullet velocity, good damage range, practically no recoil. Um, so I use the 45 round mag, the FTAC Ripper. Um, I'll tune that for recoil ADS, or excuse me, aiming idle stability. The Harbinger bu uh, muzzle, recoil control, bullet velocity, AMOP V4, bar, ADS speed and then the fielder barrel recoil damage range. Some people will take off the owner barrel and put high velocity rounds, but I think the high velocity rounds actually hurt the damage range too much on this gun. And so then um, at your like medium to long range distances, I, I it really does feel like it takes another one to two shots to kill when you have high velocity rounds on it. Um, and I feel like the bolt velocity on this with the muzzle and the barrel is good enough um, that you don't need the high velocity rounds. And I'll just show you what it looks like. It does ADS a little slow. But compared, you know, to the old RPK and the Rao and the Sacken, still so much better. So as you can see, not a lot of recoil. And if I just take my thumb off, it's a lot of vertical recoil, which is the easiest type to control. All right, so those are the top five meta loadouts in Warzone 2, or at least in my opinion. If there's a loadout that you think I should try, let me down know down in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching. Drop a like, drop a sub if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.